come out, they're going to practice, they're going to learn the playbook and do the things that they need to do and their performance as it relates to how they progress. How much have you watched them? I mean, how much film have you seen? I mean, you'd have to go back to Jebby's high school career. Yeah, you know, and I, and I saw both of them when they were coming out of high school in the huddle tape and all that sort of stuff. Uh, with regards to the performance and their play here as Nebraska quarterback, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't watched that at all. No practice film? No, nothing. You know. Bigger picture question: How are you with all this? I mean, you're gonna, your position to is to be in a highly scrutinized. Sure. You can see the level of attention. Sure. Probably. Do you understand what you're walking into here? Sure. Do you? Yeah. What do you think of it? It's been awesome. It's tremendous, particularly in the in the state of Nebraska. I mean, when you guys as well, like, we sell out the spring game three weeks ago <laughs> what 24 hours or whatever it was there's a tremendous piece to that puzzle that you can only have a tremendous sense of appreciation for the fans love their football here that, that's great <laughs> what could be better yeah what did you you know but um, and then there's that other piece to it as frosty's mentioned you know the scrutiny piece of it that, but that, yeah that comes with the territory you know have you ever I'm been fond of saying, like that? Well, I'm fond of saying everybody in America has three jobs. Their real job, coaching football, and then coaching quarterbacks. <laughs> How many interviews did you do typically down at UCF? Um, oh, I don't know. Uh, maybe one a week, one every other week, somewhere thereabouts. Yeah. You know, I you know it's going to be an enjoyable process to some degree, especially you know. But, but of course, you know that hey, that's hey, you know I get that. You guys get that. You know, and um, we just have to make certain that the quarterbacks are effective and efficient on a consistent basis. You know, and and to make certain they take care of the football because you guys know as well as anybody if my position screws it up we don't we don't have a chance well i gotta ask you why were you struck by that tanner lee or what was striking it was just you know you you identified all the other pieces to the puzzle that went into maybe making an evaluation one way or another but when it came right down to it it was the, the performance on the field you know because you said I think you said something to the degree he's been able to take advantage of a, a quirk or something you know and performed really well at the combine I guess and I, I don't know that but apparently he did um, but ultimately it comes down to performance on the on the field Hey, Mario. Eric. Yeah. I'm Eric Wilson with the Hi, Eric. Yeah. Nice, nice to, to meet, meet you, you man. Sorry, Pleasure. Thanks for your time. Since, so you know who I am before. Uh, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Remember the name. Absolutely. So, right. so, uh, and tell Terry hi. Absolutely. Talk to you the absolutely. I will. Hey, Coach, what's been yeah. the biggest What's been the biggest difference in uh, quarterbacks between UCF and here? I know taking football aside, but maybe from a physicality standpoint. I was talking to Sip. I mentioned the same thing. We're, it's, I, I, I think our experience is going to be very similar. You know, we, took, we inherited a group of quarterbacks that were – going to play in a different style of offense and you know KZ came in and um, really did well uh, on his playbook test so we knew he was cognitively ready to play it was just going to take reps and so on and so forth um, so we're in a simple we're kind of in a similar situation you know uh, but I don't have any pre preconceived notions about what they can or can't do, and we're going to find out. So you, you didn't go back and watch any practice film on them in past years? Okay. No. Um, how do you think the offense is going to translate into the Big Ten? Uh, like Frosty made that comment, they're going to have to adjust to us. Have you, looked, have, have you looked into the Big Ten much? Or what's your level? Of you know, my experience was, was twofold. One, when we were at Northern Iowa, we played – Iowa three times during the time I was there. Our first year, they, they, I think it was 2005, they got after us pretty good. The next two times we played them pretty tough, as a matter of fact. Uh, we went down on a two minute drill, had a chance to beat them. I think we were on the 29 or 30 yard line and, and they ended up blocking both of our field goal attempts. The third time, we played them. We, we really had them beat, and they came back to beat us in the, in the uh, fourth quarter. 
Uh, the other experience I had, uh, we played Wisconsin. I think it was the year. I think it was the year after Monty Ball had left, had graduated, and uh, we were driving down to win the game. We were, I think, about the 28, 29 yard line. It was fourth and one, and uh, they they tipped our ball at the. Uh, line of scrimmage going in and they ended up beating us. Um, I've watched Big Ten football on tape and that sort of thing. It's, as you know, it's great football. What's the, I guess, when you look at the Big Ten compared to the conference you were in, yes. what, are, what are the fundamental differences? Oh, well, I, you know, just... Uh, what jumps out of what, what jumps out of me is probably the depth, you know, of, of the of the of the defenses uh, in terms of replacement of players, they're not going to lose that much from their first team guys to their second team guys. So when guys get when players get injured in the ACC, there might be a little bit more of a drop off than here. Um, obviously, the speed factor is, is going to be different, but then again, we're going to be faster. You know? Schedule. Have you, did, you, did you take note of your schedule, your initial schedule? <laughs> uh, no. To be quite honest, I haven't. I've been really focused like a laser beam on just what we needed to get taken care of here. And obviously, there wasn't a whole heck of a lot of time to breathe from after the bowl game was over to then getting our 2018 class taken care of and then jumping right into what do we need to get prepared for in terms of spring ball and those so sorts we of things. Here, you don't know, you don't know the, I think, oh, I, I think we go to Ohio State, yeah, we go to, we, we go to Michigan, yeah. <laughs> we go to Wisconsin. <laughs> That's, that's a good start. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. I, pretty go to Iowa. And we go to Iowa? Yeah. Okay. Go and to I, Northwest. And I know, I know, I know Iowa's a tough place to play, you know? I, I, I do know that. So. What do you think of this? We're going to uh, tee it high, let it fly. <laughs> you know? I, I think our focus, more so than anything, Sip, is, is about our guys. You know? And I think... Not I think, you know, Coach Walsh was always really concerned about, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to worry about how we play. And my total focus is to ensure, as we talked about earlier, that our quarterbacks are effective and efficient on a consistent basis. That's what we have to ensure beyond a doubt. Now, whatever happens at, after that, because a young guy's talent and he can go beyond that particular part awesome tremendous what i've heard and read is you wouldn't want to coach another position well uh i don't know a whole heck of a lot but i know three things three things i know three i know three things for certain there is a god i'm not god and other than my catholic faith and my wife and son my family, there's nothing I love more than coaching offensive football and quarterbacks. It's just a fascinating position. There's so much to it uh, that makes up that variable of performance and what goes into it. And there's always, matter of fact, I was just reading an article, uh, going back and doing more research, just about uh, long-term and short-term memory and how that's pulled up and how quickly we can get that done because the young guy has to make a decision about X, Y, Z in terms of let's say, a particular plat pass play and how that working memory can be tapped to, into and how quickly that can happen. Uh, for us, it's, it's, it's vital. So there's so much to it. I mean, you, know, you talk about the leadership portion of it, you know? That, I was wondering, like, that's why a fascinating thing. How, how do you teach a kid how to lead? How do you coach leaders? Well, uh, you know, there, it, it, we can talk about the qualities of leadership for, you know, in terms of uh, the attributes. But when you ask the question, you know, what is it? I mean, what is the essence of it? To me, the essence of leadership is performance. Albert Einstein was a leader, maybe a reluctant leader at that, but because of his performance in physics and all of those sorts of things, he had a lot of credibility. People would listen to him. That's one example. Alexander the Great was a tremendous leader, you know, and a proactive guy, you know, and 
by his performance and how he did things, albeit as young as he was, tremendous leader. You know, you talk about quarterbacks in terms of leadership. No quarterback has ever led by his quiet demeanor or his vocal prowess. Absolutely, because, you know, a guy who's jacking all the time and can't perform on Saturdays is nothing but a windbag. A guy who wants to, quote, unquote, lead by example, but can't get it done on Saturday is an empty, impossible example. So whether he's a vocal guy, and you've been around those guys, or whether he's a more quiet guy, his performance is the thing that gets it done. Joe Montana was, God, I mean, Joe wasn't the most vocal guy in the world. But good grief, what a leader. And we can look on the other end of the spectrum with guys like, for example, maybe Jeff Garcia or Brett Favre, and I don't know Tom Brady's vocal prowess that much, but I understand, I've heard that he's more of a vocal guy. It's a different cat. But the underlying current of their ability to lead, and that gives them that moral authority, is their performance. That's got to be practice too, right? This can't be this can't be a game performance thing, right? Yeah, those you know, I, that 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 nature and notion of a of a gamer is maybe a little overrated. You know, those sorts of things that he's able, a quarterback's able to do uh, during the course of the game or practice and their experience in practice. Do you, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think so. And so much of, of, of our ability to perform. For example, just think about the pass game, right? You need three general things to have a pass game. You've got to be able to protect. you got to be able to catch the ball, and you got to be able to throw it. What are those th three things are missing? You don't have a pass game, right? Well, if you can extend that sort of thinking logic to the larger question, okay, for what example? What's the most important position? Well, the most important position can't be, de can be decided upon the nature and notion of function. Right? So what is it? It's that, that sense of responsibility that a quarterback has over and above his teammates. And we can talk about this if you want to we'll do it right now and have a discussion about it but it's a fascinating discussion it's awesome in terms of because you're asking about that question of leadership and with that leadership aspect is you know importance and all those sorts of things that's a fascinating discussion yeah you, you've, you've, you've met him haven't you then you've talked to him doesn't he have that sort of quiet sort of demeanor to him? That kind of struck me about him. You know, there was um, there was that sense of calm about Adrian that was interesting to me. You know. What are you? I guess what are you looking for? You can obviously spot the talent on film, but when you're recruiting a quarterback, what are the traits that you sit there across the room? Well, you know, some of those things you're not going to necessarily find out until he gets there, but you're going to ask as many questions from the janitor, from the secretary who you see first in the, as you walk in the classroom or in the school, excuse me, and you want to try to get a sense, who is this young guy? You know, hey, what kind of guy is uh, Billy Schmatz? Oh, he's a great kid. Ah, uh, he's a real whatever. As soon as you get a red flag, let's run it down. Right? You, you obviously want to talk to the head coach. You'd like to talk to the offensive coordinator, but you'd also like to talk to the defensive coach because the head coach and the offensive coordinator might try to protect him. You know what I'm saying? I guess. But the defensive coordinator might tell you the truth.